All candidates participating were asked the same questions and were given the same amount of time to respond. This video was filmed by QAC TV and the questions were selected by editor Angela Price with reader input. Hi, my name is Hannah Combs reporting for the Bay Times and Record Observer. We're here with Elaine Harrison who is the Democratic Commission candidate at large and thank you for joining us. Thank you. Uh, Elaine, in two minutes or less, can you tell us a little bit about yourself and why you want to be County Commissioner? Sure. Um, my name is Elaine Harrison. My maiden name is Glasgow. I was raised in Queen Anne County. I've attended our schools. I graduated Queen Anne County High School in 1984. I have always been an engaged uh, citizen in the community, serving on various committees, the Maryland State of Maryland Child Care Advisory Panel. I was the parent rep for six years. I've worked on the Queen Anne County Department of Emergency Services Public Health Safety Subcommittee. I've uh, most recently just completed a nine-year stint as a board member of Chesapeake Charities with five years as their treasurer. So I've always stayed engaged in the community and been involved in issues that we're facing. Um, I'm an accountant by trade. I, uh, I, I, do, I don't do income taxes, I do budgets and cash flows and I read financial statements and I think those are skills that uh, you know, I, our county could really benefit from. So I, I finally have, it's the time, the time is right for me. I'm about to be an empty nester. Uh, my oldest son is in the United States Air Force. My youngest is a senior at Kent Island High School. So I'm gonna have the time and energy to commit to the county and I want to hear from the people. I want to know. I, I feel like I'm really familiar with the issues that we're facing here on the shore, being raised in this area. And, and I want to be the voice of the people. I want to talk to everybody. I want to get their input. And I want to come to the best decisions. And it's a critical time right now as we're facing a revised comp plan that's coming up in right. this next term. All right, thank you. So again, in two minutes, um, Explain what you think are the biggest issues facing the county. Well, like I just said, the comp plan is going to be renewed. The comp plan is our blueprint for our planning and zoning. It's our long range plan. And it's going to be really critical that we get as much citizen involvement in that process as we possibly can. The other thing that I think is critical to our county for many reasons is broadband. We've got to have connectivity in this county. We've issued Chromebooks to all of our school students. They go home in a lot of areas of the northern section and they can't even get online to do their homework. It would also encourage a lot more economic development and um, bring some jobs in here. It's, we, we've got to give businesses the things that they need to thrive and broadband is one of those things. I, I also want to see us lower in our taxes so we can compete more with our neighboring counties. So kind of a segue from that, the, the comprehensive plan will be updated in the next term. Um, taking a minute, can you kind of describe your, your vision for what that plan might look like? It's going to start with citizen engagement. We must have the voices from all over the county, North, Ken Island, the middle sections. We're, we're about to face some really big changes uh, with the Delaware Bypass opening up and uh, the North County is going to be inundated with a lot more traffic than they're used to. Mm -hmm. So we need to make sure that we're addressing all of the things that are coming at us in the future with the next comp plan and pro appropriately placing things in our county. If we, if we know we're going to have another big corridor of traffic, you know, that's where we need to put some growth and infrastructure there. So we need to uh, do our best to leverage all of our resources so we can have the best bang for our buck. What, um, what provisions would you make to provide needed services for senior citizens? You know, one of the things that this county is sorely lacking is a continuing care community. Mm -hmm. uh, no place do we have anywhere where uh, spouses can stay together uh, throughout the remainder of their life if one of them needs an assisted living or nursing care. Uh, we also don't, uh, we, we have cut back on our senior centers recently mm -hmm. and 
Uh, a lot of people really need that engagement and we need to have more of that. We have some vacant buildings in town and I think it's time we uh, throw a staff member or two in there and some community volunteers and bring these senior centers back on, on track. So Elaine, how should the county respond to the school system request for funding above maintenance of effort? You know, that's a, that's a really tough question. Um, we, we do have to be responsible with every dollar that we spent. We've recently had uh, the Office of Legislative Office Audits come in here to our school system. We've got a report on that. We need to seek the solutions that, you know, up to the problems that we've identified there. That's the first step that we have to do. We have to be sure that we're keeping all of our assets focused on the classroom and, uh, and we eliminate any wasteful spending that we can. The next thing we need to do is we can tie in a few things together. We, we can leverage some private-public partnerships. We've done this one other time before in this county. It's enhancing vocational education in this county. We had our AutoCAD students draw blueprints. We had our masonry students build a foundation. We had our carpentry students build a house. They worked with the tradesmen, the local electricians, plumbers, HVAC guys. They workforce training and we built that house. We turned it over to our housing authority for workforce housing. We're building sheds right now. Build the house. Go for the big instead of just the small. We can do a lot more by leveraging those partnerships. Okay. Uh, do you want to weigh in on balancing future development and protecting the environment? We need to protect our environment. We are surrounded by the Chesapeake Bay and all of its tributaries. Um, we, we need to be very careful. It's a very delicate asset and it's one that our watermen depend on for their living. So we have to keep it healthy. Uh, we have to be very careful with our blueprint, our comp plan. We're going to develop that. We need to really be, think about where we're going to put our growth in the future. We need to make sure there's adequate infrastructure. We need to be sure we're not going over capacity on sewers and things like that. So um, that's going to be critical as we develop this comp plan in this next term. And, and speaking of that, how would you consider fostering business growth and economic development within the county? Like we've already talked about, we've got to give business what they need. And what they need is connectivity. They need that broadband access. A lower tax rate might also encourage every surrounding county has lower taxes than, than we do on our income tax. And income tax is you know, what you pay when you have a job. So um, we can do a lot better to encourage that. And we need to build that into our comp plan uh, with the broadband as well. Residents in the northern part of the county often complain they don't feel they're getting the same level of services or support as the rest of the county. Uh, in one minute or less, can you tell me how you might address their concerns? Well, the first thing is connect them online so they can tell us what they think via email or text messages or whatever it may be, is get them looped back into the system. And we do have some wonderful private partner private-public partnerships that we work with that have enhanced services there. For instance, our uh, paramedics are living in the Settlersville Volunteer Fire Department. We're about to move into the Churchill Volunteer Fire Department as well, and that benefits everyone. It gives the citizens a better response time on their emergency services, and it doesn't cost the taxpayers a lot of money because we're living in the Volunteer Firehouse. So that's a perfect example of a private-public partnership that we need to leverage and make sure we're using to the fullest in this county. We need to engage all of our citizens and protect our rural areas just like we do Ken Island. Very good. Uh, lastly, are there any uh, other issues that you want to revisit? Anything we didn't discuss? Well, I think, you know, there's, there's so much that I'm excited about jumping in and doing and um, listening to the people, respecting their opinions, being fair to everyone, striking that balance. Um, accountants are good at balance and uh, for every debit there's a credit, for every night there's a day. We need to reconcile all of these things. We need to uh, tighten up 
our county funding and make sure that every dollar we spend is spent wisely and uh, then we, we can have a lot more. We need to encourage more nonprofit works and more citizen engagement throughout all of our, of our various service areas, whether they're schools or seniors or volunteer fire service. We, we, we need to enhance all of that. And, uh, and make Queen Anne County a, a better county with engaged community spirit. Very good. Elaine, thank you so much for participating in You're our forum today. Welcome. Thank you very much, Hannah.